Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and this video is part number two of the hydraulic system of a David Brown and we're going to take a deep dive and if you're not interested in circuit diagrams or hydraulic diagrams and an in-depth explanation because it's not going to be very exciting then you might as well skip this video but if you do have a David Brown and you want to work on your hydraulic system or you want to fix it or repair it I think this is probably useful for you but then again maybe not so so first we're going to look at all the different elements that make up the hydraulic system of a David Brown on a schematic so folks uh, what I have on the screen is a presentation of the hydraulic system of a David Brown and I'm going to take you first of all through all the different components of that system and then we'll be looking at the different operating modes and what happens inside the hydraulic system I did mention before that this is going to be a deep dive I hope it's not too deep but I think it's going to be all right anyhow let's start at the bottom we have our hydraulic filter which is actually submerged in the oil or the hydraulic oil inside the uh, gearbox case that's been sucked up by a hydraulic pump which is delivering around 2000 psi and there is a pressure relief valve fitted uh, to protect the whole system set to about 2000 psi oil has been pumped up by the hydraulic pump and is fed to the ram cylinder which is all the way on the top there this is the ram cylinder and it's the ram cylinder that will make the lift arms move up or down so if you put oil into the ram cylinder the lifting arms go up and if we remove the oil from the ram cylinder then uh, the lifting arms will go down under the weight of the attached kit or devices there is what we call a non-return valve here to prevent uh, leaking oil out of the ram cylinder back into the oil pump for instance if the engine is not running that would be one typical example um, but we've got a couple of more interesting parts we've got the descent control knob this is the whole descent control knob and that controls how fast your attachment will descend once you are in the descent mode we've got a hold valve uh, which plays a very important role for holding and releasing uh, the lifting arms uh, or let them lower equally important is the bypass valve which is actually going to allow oil to come through and bypass the ram cylinder completely when that's in a hold position and we'll see how all that works in a few seconds and then we have the spool valve this is like a three-way valve with uh, a passage for the hold valve a passage for the uh, bypass valve so different passages and then of course an output of that so depending where the position of this plunger is uh, we'll have the, either the um, bypass valve bleeding through or we will have the hold valve bleeding through or we'll have both valves bleeding through that all depends a bit on the uh, operating mode at we, where we will be in at that moment in time and also we have something else here which is our traction control valve and a steel ball that actually controls that now um, on the lifting arms you will find a push rod uh, which is the height control push rod which will actually sit at some moment in time on top of the rocker lever now right now it's not sitting there because what I'm showing here is a depth control position just for clarity we got a sensing unit uh, which is fitted on top of the PTO and here you would connect your third point as we say from the hitch um, and that spring here could be depressed or not depressed and depending on the position of the spring how much is depressed or not depressed will lower or raise this depth control push rod and that control uh, that control push rod is then going to push onto the rocker lever of course depending in which mode we have set the mode selector the mode selector is all the way here on the bottom uh, either this is a um, uh, depth control height control or it's uh, the TCU traction control in all cases the rocker lever uh, pivots on a cam and the cam is actually controlled by our control handle on the side of the tractor this is where the operator will maneuver the handle back and forth so going forward it's lowering the uh, the uh, lifting arms typically and then moving it backwards it's going to raise the lifting arms and there's also something called an abutment uh, in certain mode conditions the rocker lever will move onto that abutment plate here but we'll see that later on how all that it's going to work 
And at the bottom here, I have an additional filter, which is actually an option on some of the tractors. So hopefully all these different parts in the hydraulic system didn't throw you off uh, because all by all it's pretty simple and you'll see at the end of this video how simple it really is. But let us start with the basic principles of that hydraulic system. Now don't look too closely on the rocker lever or anything like that because they are not in the right position. But the principle we're trying to explain here is the lift. So how do you lift? The lifting arms, how you hold them and how you lower them. Uh, and it's all about the spool valve. That's the most important valve in combination with the bypass valve and the actual hold valve. So let's have a look on how the lift is working and then we have a look on how the hold is working and then we have a look on how the descent is working. So folks, we've been looking at uh, all the different parts that make up the hydraulic system of the David Brown. And now we're going to have a look at the basic operation uh, and we're going to start with a lift operation. Now lift doesn't mean nothing more than we're going to make sure that the lifting arms are moving upwards. And to do so, the ram cylinder will need to be filling up with oil. And the oil is coming obviously from the hydraulic pump. So the pump will pump it up through the non-return valve and then it will go all the way up to the ram cylinder. And it's going to try to fill that up. So as long as we keep supplying this oil to the ram cylinder, the ram cylinder will move forward and it will rotate the lifting arm upwards. And then we have an upwards movement. Now to trigger this, we need to pull the control handle backwards. If we pull the control handle backwards, then we're going to shift the cam here. And when we shift the cam, we go into position the spool valve plunger into a certain position. Now the spool valve itself has a passageway between the bypass valve and the output going back to the sump and a passageway for the uh, hold valve in the same way. Now in the raising position of the plunger, and that's where we are in, we are raising the lifting arms, both passageways are closed, totally closed. Now that means that oil, which has been pushed up by the hydraulic pump, cannot pass through the bypass valve, because that is actually blocked right here. And the same thing is true for the hold valve oil which is coming through the non-return valve cannot leak out through the hold valve because we are also blocking off the hold valve on the spool valve and therefore the lifting arm is now moving upwards. At some moment in time we will have reached our final point and then we need to move from a lift position to a hold position and that's going to happen because of this height control push rod, this one right here, will be pushing onto the rocker lever, which is now not showing in the right place because this part here should be right underneath the height control push rod. And then the plunger will change the position and it's gonna go into a hold position. So let us look now at the hold position. As you could see, that was pretty easy to do. So now we're going to look at the hold position. So now we have reached our desired height and now we want to hold the lifting arm into place. So let's look at the hold position. Now what does the hold position mean? It actually means that the oil inside the ram cylinder should not be able to return, nor should it be able to get additional oil. So none of those should be allowed. That means that we cannot allow any high pressure oil coming from the hydraulic pump to pass onwards to the ram cylinder or having oil coming back and leaking back out from the ram cylinder. We can't allow any of that. So now we will need to find a way to release that oil pressure and the way this is done is very simple. By actually having the height control push rod being, being pushing onto the rocker lever, the plunger inside the spool valve has moved into what we call now the hold position. And in the hold position, the passageways are still there. They haven't changed. 
However, the passageway for the hold valve is now blocked and remains blocked. But the passageway for the bypass valve is now opened up. So in other words, hydraulic oil pressure coming from the hydraulic pump is now hitting the bypass valve, which is now open. It can flow freely through it, like so, and onwards to the spool valve, through the passageway and out back into the sump. So now no more oil is flowing through the non-return valve. In other words, we don't feed any more oil to the ram cylinder. Now, in the other way around, uh, we still have a weight on the lifting arms, and that causes a certain force on the oil in the ram cylinder, which is gonna push back this way. Obviously, it can't get out through that valve because that valve is closed. Because here we have a low pressure, here we have a higher pressure, and there's even a spring, so it's a one-way valve, can't get out. But the oil might get out that way, through the hold valve. But reality is that it can't because we have it blocked off on the spool valve. So this flow here is blocked off right here. So now we are having our lifting arm in a hold position. There is a little bit of a trick on the little valve here, which we call the latch valve, uh, to make sure that it really stays locked and in place. And now that we have the hold under control, now let's look at the descent. Now, now we would like to lower the lifting arms. So we want that to come down. And to do so, we'll move the control handle forward. And that should normally lower the lifting arms. Now, to lower the lifting arms, we need to get rid of the oil in the ram cylinder under the weight of what is attached to the lifting arm. So the oil has to move out of the ram cylinder. And now we have to see what happens uh, with the spool valve first uh, on how we're going to do this. Because we move the lever forward, the cam now has rotated again. And that caused the spool valve, but more specifically the plunger to move in a certain position, which we call the lowering position. The passages are still there. However, in this case, when the plunger moves to the lowering position, both passages are opened up. There is no more blockage. So oil can flow through from both sides. That actually means that hydraulic oil from the hydraulic pump will hit the bypass valve, which is now open and will flow through the bypass valve like so and out of the spool valve back into the sump. Equally, um, we'll have the oil sitting in the ram cylinder, which is now going to be pushed back, right? So this oil will come back like this, and it needs to leak out through the hold valve. Now the hold valve has now also a free passageway in the spool valve, and it will actually leak out like that also back into the sump. And because of that, now the piston is moving inwards and the lifting arm is now rotating downwards until again we hit our lowest point whereby we're going back to a hold position. And this is how the descent is working. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, I should still mention is the descent control valve. This one right here. Uh, this is the knob that you can turn manually and you can turn it clockwise or anti-clockwise to affect the speed of the descent. Uh, and this is the regulating valve for that descent. So if you have a heavy weight on your lifting arms, so let's say this is a real heavy weight, you know, heavy, heavy, uh, then you don't want to have that weight um, moving the ram cylinder so fast down that it actually hits the ground, poof, you don't want that to happen. So therefore, you can turn in the descent control screw, which is a big knob, to reduce the way this uh, hold valve is actually leaking. So this is going to affect the leakage effect of that uh, hold valve. So by turning the descent control, you can actually control 
the rate of descending of the lifting arms depending on the load that you have on it. So now that we know all the basic functions, let us look at the different operating modes. We have actually four modes of operation. It is the depth control of the draft mode, which is probably the most interesting one to look at. And we're going to start with that one, then followed by the height mode. And I'm not going to say much about the height mode because we already kind of looked at it with the, uh, the very generic basic operations, because that's really the lift mode. And then third, we're going to look at the TCU mode or the traction control mode, which is interesting. And there's a fourth mode, which is also happening in the traction control mode, but that's with an external three-way valve where we're going to drive hydraulic motors. Now, that will not be in this specific video because that's an add-on to my specific tractor. So let's start with any further view with the depth control. The draft mode or the depth mode, typically we use that for pulling a plow. So the plow would be attached with its third point of the pivoting point towards the sensing unit. So uh, we need the sensing unit uh, to automatically control the depth of the plow. So we'll have to use the sensing unit in combination with the control handle. And all that will work through the depth control push rod and that will affect the rocker lever positioning and it will affect the position of the spool valve depending on the situation. So, first of all, we need to place the mode selector into draft mode. So if you are in draft mode uh, and we move back the control handle up to the point where it hits this spring in the back here, this is the spring here, but don't push it over the spring, then we'll have the lifting arms that should be moving up. Now when the lifting arms are moving up, there will be additional pressure by the third point or the pivoting point of the plow coming into the sensing unit. And then the spring will actually compress. If the spring compresses, then this wire here will get a bit looser. And as so, the spring here will pull up the actual depth control push rod. So this moves up and as a result, we will have the plunger in the spool valve which is now being repositioned because that whole rocker lever is now pivoting on the cam and because now it can actually move up because of the depth control push rod that has been moved up. So now we have the plunger moved to the lifting mode. If it's in the lifting mode we know that we want to have all passageways closed. So we'll have a closed passageway here and a closed passageway here. So no oil can pass through the bypass valve and no oil can pass through the hold valve. In other words, all the oil will flow from the hydraulic pump through the non-return valve on towards the actual ram cylinder and it will fill it up with oil. While it's doing so, piston moves out and we have the lifting arm then rotating upwards. So now we're moving back the lever a little bit and we call this the hold mode. So now in the hold mode, what happens is that we are actually pivoting the cam here again that allows uh, the um, lifting arm to be stabilized so at a certain height. So we have already moved the plow to a certain height and now we want to stabilize it. So the cam is moved and then the plunger in this pool valve is now going towards the uh, holding position. And in the holding position, we know that oil coming from the hydraulic pump must come through the bypass valve and actually through the passageway in the spool valve and out back to the sump. And that's why we now have a passageway right here in the hold mode yet the hold valve is still closed. Nothing opens up there. So uh, we cannot have um, oil leaking back out, out of the ram cylinder, back to the hold valve. That is not possible because that hold valve is now on. Um, now imagine that um, for some reason, the plow is actually moving upwards a bit. And because it does that, um, we now have even, again, more pressure on the sensing unit. 
Now that means if we now have more sense, uh, more pressure on it again, uh, that poshrat will even move higher up. And if it does that, depending on which position we were here, we were actually in a hold position, we are actually um, going to change again the plunger position, but now it's gonna go to a descent mode. And in a descent mode, we know that both, both passageways are fully closed. So we're gonna close both passageways. So that will actually now send oil from the hydraulic pump all the way back now, back into the uh, ram cylinder. And now the arm will lift again until it hits again the holding point, as we just explained. Um, and this whole feedback mechanism is actually controlled by this spring moving in and out and the depth control push rod. It's a, a play between the sensing unit and the actual control handle. That all together plays an important role on how the depth control works. So now if the operator decides that his plowing depth isn't deep enough, he can increase the plowing depth and still have automatic control. So he's gonna move the control handle forward. If he moves that forward, the cam will rotate again. And then the plunger inside the spool valve will actually position itself into a descent mode. So in other words, in the descent mode, we know that both passageways are actually open. So we'll have then oil coming from the hydraulic pump through the bypass valve, through the passageway, the spool valve, back to the sump. But we'll also have oil coming out of the ram cylinder because that's been pushed back, this piston, because of the weight of the plow, it's pushed back like this, the oil comes all around the corner and then feeds back out to the hold valve, back to the spool valve, back to the passageway, and then back out to the sump. So now the lifting arm is rotated down, so our plow is now going down until it hits the point where our lever is. So when the plow is going down, what we will see is that the pressure is now less on the sensing unit, so the spring now gets extended, and now when the spring extends, this wire here will, will become very tight, and in fact what it will do, it will eventually move this up here and lower the depth control push rod. And when that happens, we are ending back up in a hold condition. So the valve right here, the spool valve, more specifically the plunger, will put us back in a hold position. And this is how it works. It's a continuous loop of operation. So I hope this was a bit clear. I know it's a bit cluttered, but that's how the depth and draft mode is actually working. So now that you have seen the depth control, you can understand that this is a very handy feature to have on your tractor, especially if you're going to plow and you want to plow always on the same depth. You have now a self-adjusting system, to some extent, of course. And you can even affect the plowing depth and set it. So, enough of that. So now let's move on to the next step, which is the traction control. Now, traction control is all about moving the weight of the attachment towards the rear wheels of the tractor so you get more grip. So, let's have a look. So now let's look at the traction control mode. And in the traction control mode, the mode selector is actually placed in the TCU mode. And if you do so, we are shifting the rocker lever forward onto the abutment here. This is where we're placing it on. And the backside of the rocker lever is no longer underneath the height control push rod or the depth control push rod. Note that the screw here, the adjustment screw, is now pointing straight under the traction control valve. So if we now move the lever backwards past the springs, so we are compressing the springs here, then the plunger here will force the flow into an upwards position for the lifting arms. In other words, it will close all passageways on the spool valve, as we've seen before. If we now let the control handle go, it will move back just in front of the spring. And this is what we call the hold mode. And in the hold mode, obviously, our 
plunger here will actually stay now in the hold mode by actually locking or blocking the hold valve return and leaving open the passageway for the bypass valve. So now all the oil pressure comes through the bypass uh, valve through the tubes and then through the passageway back out to the sump. Nothing really happens yet here on the traction control valve. That's still open and uh, no oil can return because the valve here, the, the hold valve is still closed. As you can see, we have a blockage right there. So from the hold point on, we now start to move the lever a bit backwards until we start to see a minor lift on the arms. It just starts to lift. And this is kind of like our minimum weight transfer point. That's where the weight transfer is starting. If we do that, what really happens is that we are still in the hold position, right? So oil still gets through the uh, bypass valve, like so. But what has happened is that we slightly moved up this traction control valve and this ball here, right here, has moved up a bit. And because that ball moved up a bit, we have narrowed down the opening here. So there is less pressure or less oil able to flow through the bypass valve back to the pan or the sump. So some of that oil will actually come through the non-return valve and then start pushing the ram cylinder very slowly upwards, but very slowly. The more we move this handle then from that minimum weight transfer point forward, we're going to go to what we call the maximum weight transfer. And if we have the maximum weight transfer, we really move this traction control valve all the way up, which is almost blocking this passage here completely. So in other words, the, um, hold, the hold valve is still closed, but our uh, bypass valve is still open, but it's kind of blocked by this steel ball here because that opening is as good as closed and that's why the lifting arm even moves now more up because the we have more oil flowing from the hydraulic pump through the non-return valve back to the actual ram cylinder so we move it higher up and this how is that work so if we now were to move back this uh, handle back to a lower position then just the opposite would happen the ball here at the top would go down a bit because this um, adjustment screw has gone down. And then, of course, we have a better flow again uh, for the bypass valve. And then we are no longer lifting as fast as we did before. And we know when we lift something, we move more weight onto the rear wheels of the tractor. So this is how this works. So folks, we're nearing the end of this video and I know I took a few shortcuts here and there, but otherwise this video would have been way too long. So if you have any specific questions, feel free to ask me. In the next video, we're going to talk and actually do the adjustments on all the different valves and control levers for the different modes of operation. And I might actually even change the oil pump out depending on what the state of my oil pump is. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.